Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz with zero increment on Lee Chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that we understand the flow of the game, what the opponent is trying to do, what are our plans and how are we going to implement them in future. And before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. I'll make sure there's something to learn from this game. Got the black pieces, I'll play C6. The Karukan defense. Karukan defense, you can play with any kind of an opening, whatever white does. Play C6 followed by D5. Go for the center after for the second move and then just develop your lights by bishop on F5. Get your knight on f6. If a, you can generally exchange, but I prefer bringing it back to g6. Uh, the idea is if he now takes, I can take back uh, with the h pawn and make open the h file and use it. And see, he lost a piece there. And it's 1969 player. He just missed a piece there. That, that's a blunder. What can we do here? His knight can come here, but then what is it doing? Nothing much, I believe. We'll just place the bishop in between, attacking the knight. Probably will castle now. Yep, that's what he does. Let's still up the other knight as well. Makes sense to me. To d7, so that his knight if tries to come over here, we can simply exchange if required. Now that the bishop on e7, kick this thing away from here. Let's try to just remove the bishop. I don't mind pushing the pawns forward, so yep, let's do it. Okay, so knight goes now on h5. We will take on the bishop. Exchanging is not bad when you are piece up. I should first take on the bishop and then take on this knight as well. Yep. Let's take on the knight and remove the pressure. Whatsoever. We can develop the light square pressure, but then he takes with the knight. We'll first give a check. Develop the bishop over here so that we can castle either side of the board. If required, let's see. We can bring back this bishop as well to defend f7 if required. Rook on c8 is one thing which we are looking at. Okay. He's attacking f7 now. So, yep. Bring back the bishop. goes back the castle on the king side now makes sense to me shall I shall I wait let's get the rook on c file first why hurry to castle okay where is he going probably nowhere Shall I offer him queen exchange? Nah. Okay, he's trying to push the pawns forward, which is fine. Let's castle. Let's play solid. 
queen over here, then we're forcing him to take on a pawn there, so would be helpful. Apart from the blunder, he hasn't done anything wrong there, but that should seal the game at least. Just trying to find some good square for the queen. Now that he has aligned the pieces, I didn't want to attack much there. It's a waste of effort. Okay. Just place the queen here, attacking the a4 now. If he tries to defend, then we take on the pawn. He doesn't defend it. Can I bring the bishop as well? No, uh, let's not. I'll just take on the pawn. He's aligning some stuff there. I just bring back the queen. He's trying to create some pressure there. Which I think is completely okay. I can just stand a defender. Oh, what is he threatening? The bishop? You're okay with that. I'll just take on the rook. He takes back. The spawn is pretty annoying at times, so we have to be a bit careful here. Oh, he's losing a rook there. Let's take then see it at the first place and now we can take on the pawn as well the annoying pawn so no threats of mate anytime soon so he resigns yep the caro can defense working out even if he didn't do that blunder i think we were pretty much in control the bishop on g6 is always nice and he did a lot of mistakes in this game and with that we reach back on 1950 so that's good news again let's quickly analyze the game uh, before we just wrap it up side of the e4 i played c6 the caro can defense and he plays c4 trying to prepare for d4 he placed c3 trying to prepare for d4 going for the center i yeah, he just went on with exchange then and then plays d4 finally i developed the bishop on f5 right square in the uh caro can defense for the bishop here I just develop my knight on f6. Uh, he gives bishop for exchange. As I was saying, that you can always take on the bishop is what computer suggests. But I try to bring back the idea is if now if he takes, you can take back with the h pawn and this file I just love using for the attack the h file. So that's my way of playing it. Let's go back in the game where he didn't play, but bring back bring the other square bishop and the dark square bishop on g5 trying to spoil my pawn structure if he takes the knight next move so i but played e6 defending my pawn structure and he went for the development of the other knight generally you don't uh, see this kind of move that uh, you don't bring back the bishop you generally take so he didn't he forgot that he's just blocking the queen from defending the bishop and got the knight to develop also, once you have played c3, uh, your knight will generally go on uh, d2 only, not uh, the a3. a3 is pretty much passive for the knight to just go on to. So that's that's a natural square for knight. And so he forgot that the bishop was undefended there. I took on the bishop. And that's probably the game changer there. Even if he doesn't do the blunder, I think we're pretty much good here as a normal development and can proceed with our plans of generally getting the knight uh, on c6 or d7 then getting the rook on the empty c file and then try to attack from the queen side eventually uh, we can of course kick the bishop away from here and exchange the bishops as well at some point of time but he gave away the bishop so he took it he saves then tries to attack the knight by moving the knight uh, uh, attacks the bishop by moving the knight away I bring it back uh, on e4. The idea is to attack the knight and go for exchange. Simple. Uh, he castles and 
I didn't go for exchange straight away, but develop my pieces. And then he moves the queen away. Uh, I just tried to kick the bishop away. He brings it back. And I continued chasing the bishop down on g5 then. He brings bishop to g3. I go behind the bishop again. And now it's not going anywhere. So I take it. He takes back. Uh, with the f-pawn, I was also thinking that he will take with h-pawn. The idea is uh, that after I, say, exchange the knights and do some other move, say, develop the bishop, he can try to kick the bishop away as well uh, from the f-pawn. So that could have been some counterplay from his side that I was expecting, but rather uh, we go back in the game where he take, took with the f-file and then I take on the knight, he takes back. Now queen gives a check from uh, b6, he goes back and now developing the bishop on g7 finally. He tries to attack uh, on the f7 and I just bring back the bishop now on g6. Yes, I could have castled but I thought of just getting my bishop back uh, because the bishop wasn't, yes it was controlling a bit uh, to attacking the king side but there's not much attack on the pawn. so. That was a better move, I believe, to bring back the bishop and strengthen the f7. And then rook to c8, uh, standard move from whenever you're playing as black, and the c file is semi opened up. Get your rooks on the open file. He gets the knight now on d4. I play a6, passive there, but just wanted to make sure that the knight is never coming in over here. Because if I don't, uh, and I just do something else, say bishop over here, knight can come. Uh, over to here, I can yes take on the pawn, but oh, yeah, the pawn can be taken. That's the whole point. Because if I don't do that and just play, suppose, bishop over here or just bring back the bishop, uh, he can get on the knight and the next move is pretty annoying uh, because now if I don't uh, defend it, he can play knight to d6 and that the knight is pretty much stable there. And to remove uh, the knight from here, I need to take on the pawn on e5, which will again be tough. So, didn't want to go in that direction, so I played uh, the move a6 first. He responds with uh, a4, I cancel. He tries to align the piece in the center, but of no use. I just bring my queen to c5, trying to go for some pawn gobbling on the a file. Took on the pawn. He tries to align the rooks now on uh, the f file. I got back my queen. So now his rook comes on uh, f1. I just play rook to c7, defending the f7 further. No other option. He just tried to get his rook there and exchange. I took it and then he missed the part that his other rook was hanging. So I took it on. He saves the king and I take on the annoying pawn as well, which was probably his last hope because he was thinking that if he can somehow get his queen uh, on g7, that can be a mate. That's what people generally think for once you're losing out. Uh, but yeah, that wasn't a, even an option in this game. So uh, I think it was well played overall. Uh, he did a blunder in the opening, yes. So be careful with the openings. Uh, don't lose out on pieces. Try to make sure that you develop your pieces in the right squares. And if you are just uh, too much eager to develop as well, as we saw here, you can lose out on our piece as well. So just try to be careful and don't do blunders. And thank you so much for your time. I hope this was very instructive for you and there was something to be taken away. And I hope you like the video. Please do let me know your feedback and keep watching and sharing. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.